I bought a crash 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. And at the time it seemed like a great idea, but the more I take this car apart, the more problems I'm running into. But I'm not giving up hope just yet. When I originally bought this car, by the looks of the photos, I really only thought it needed a few repairs. Yeah, a headlight, hood, rear bumper, a tailgate, and maybe a few airbags. But boy, was I completely wrong. See, that's the thing about bidding on cars you've never seen in person, sight unseen. More than likely, the photos you see just don't do the car justice, and in this case, they most certainly do not. In my last video, I managed to get the car to start. Wow, start it up. Easy. I successfully fixed the coolant leak, replaced the completely dead battery, and even got the bumper off. The problem is, it's starting to feel like every single step forward I take, I end up taking two steps back. Not only did I find more broken pieces like the radiator support behind the bumper, but I almost thought I had a blown engine. It was showing zero RPMs on the dash after I started the car. As you can see, that's not good. It's, that's almost at zero RPMs. Fortunately though, I think I might just need to calibrate the needle on the dash and we can get it back to working. The engine actually seems to be all right. Now I do have some good news. As you can see, parts have finally started to arrive. And hopefully by the end of this video, we should have a fairly nice looking front end on the car. At least that's the goal. So let me show you what I got. So far I have a brand new hood OEM. I have a quarter panel as well as the front grille over here and a new headlight. Now the first thing I want to replace in today's video is going to be this quarter panel for a few reasons. Number one, it helps mount the headlight to the front of the car. And number two, there's this dreaded sound when I open the door every single time because the door hits the quarter panel. So we have to fix that right now. Now I'm hoping removing this quarter panel is pretty straightforward as I believe there's just a few bolts here, here, maybe some up here, and then a few behind the door. And then hopefully I could just pull it off. Now there might be some issues because this is pulled in. So hopefully I can either pull this out myself or figure out a way around this without actually uh, doing any more damage. I also wouldn't be surprised if there were some other bolts under this panel here, which means we're gonna have to get this tire off and the car up on a jack stand. The first thing I needed to do was remove the stubborn caps Volkswagen puts on the top of their lug nuts. Once those were off, it was time to break out the brand new impact wrench I bought and put it to the test. Using a 17 millimeter impact socket, I loosened up the five bolts holding the wheel to the car. I just wanted them loose and not fully off until the car was in the air. Then it was time to jack the car up. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of different ways of doing this, but because I wanted to put the car on a jack stand and not just leave it on the jack itself, I decided it would be best if I jacked the car up from the rear. This way, I had enough room to put the stand in the front. Once I had the jack in the proper place, I was able to lower the car down. The reason I jacked the car up from the back of the car and not the front is because there's little spots on the car where you can put an actual jack on. And unfortunately, there's not enough room to put this and that at the same time, or so I know. Now, as you, you can't really see it under the car, but there is a spot here, but maybe you can see it a little bit better where I put the actual jack stand. You can see right here, this is where you can actually put a jack or a jack stand. And that isn't big at all, but it does give me enough room to put this jack on to get the car lifted off the ground. I continued to remove the wheel and made sure to put it under the car. This is always a good idea because God forbid the jack fails, the car would land on your rim and not on yourself or directly on the floor. Finally having clearance, I could begin to remove the torque screws that hold the fender lining to the car. After moving my way to the top, I removed two 10 millimeter bolts and a sneaky eight millimeter bolt that was hiding underneath the windshield lining. Using a wrench, I took off the two mounting bolts on the underside of the fender and then it was time to remove the two hidden 10 millimeter bolts from behind the fender liner. Up until this point though, things were going pretty easy. That is until I came across this rubber plate that prevents things from getting behind the fender. I must have spent a good half an hour to an hour trying to remove this stubborn thing. Now, I'm sure I could have taken off the door and it would have made this process a lot easier, but I really didn't want to. But if my hunch is correct, there's only two more bolts, one here and then one up top. And then this whole panel should ideally come off. I would like to be able to show you, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. It's right there is like one and the other is up here, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it and this whole thing should come off.
finally, go, oh, finally, the quarter panel is off the car. Honestly, wasn't too bad. Scale to one to 10, probably like a four, if not maybe even a three. It really was pretty easy, even with the damage that was on the car. But let me show you the extra damage that I found. That doesn't seem all that bad. All right, so honestly, there really doesn't seem to be all that much damage here to the side of the car. I can compare it to here, and I notice what needs to be straightened out and what doesn't, but it seems pretty easy. This, I'm sure, needs to be straight so that the uh, new quarter panel can bolt up to it. This needs to be bent back, which is super tiny, and this looks like it it should be straight. You can see it's kind of bent here on an angle when this also is on an angle, but this piece is straight. So I have to bend that back um, and then we can bolt up the new quarter panel. First thing I need to do to straighten out the support arm is remove the upper support bracket from being in the way. It's only held on by three bolts, so it was easy to remove. With that off the car, it was time to straighten out the metal. Now, I bought some needle nose vice grips at Harbor Freight for this exact reason. I had a feeling I would need to bend metal at some point on this car. Now, I don't really have a plan for doing this, but I did realize it was more bent than I thought. It's supposed to actually look like a square, which clearly it doesn't. Using the vice grips with a rag, I was able to easily bend the metal back into shape without scraping off much of the protective primer, which prevents against rust in the future. For any of those spots though that I did get nicked, I used some automotive primer to cover it up quick. And also, yes, I'm aware I'm calling it a quarter panel when it's really a fender. So go easy on me in the comments. All right, so in here should be the new used, but pretty much new quarter panel. I bought it OEM on eBay. Somebody was selling it used probably to fix their old Golf R and decided not to. And this is what they sent me. All right, so here we have it, a new OEM quarter panel for the Golf R. Now it's time to install it, make sure everything lines up, and then hopefully we'll be able to install or at least try to see if the headlight I bought works. All right, so I just wanna line this up on here and then I'll bolt it down. I just wanna make sure it fits and everything looks good. Now, um, I've been going back and forth as to whether or not I wanna fully like bolt this down, install it, because at some point it is gonna need paint. And I think I am going to because there's a lot more on this car that needs to get done first before it's time to paint. And I'd rather have this on securely if the time comes that it does need to be driven, um, nothing flies off. So let's install this back how we took it off. Installing this fender was surprisingly pretty easy. Now, at first, I just wanted to align it up with the car and make sure that the gaps and everything was good. And then once I had a visual that it was all aligned correctly, I could go ahead and tighten everything down into place. Now, I did run into a few hiccups trying to align everything because I didn't realize that there was a front bracket, or you can see the front bracket, was actually sticking out a little too much and it needed to be adjusted by the those two screws. Once I tweaked that into place, everything actually fit how it was supposed to. All right, so everything seems to be lining up okay on the car. And then I'm starting to run into this issue where their holes are not getting so close. And then I noticed where this issue is. You can see how far off this bracket is from the holes where it should be. Then I notice I have two bolts right here. So I'm gonna to try to unscrew these bolts and hopefully that'll be enough to align this. You know, it's gotta move like an inch. So fingers crossed. All right, so good news and bad news. The good news is I was able to get the quarter panel put on the car. Everything lines up perfectly, which is good. It took me probably an hour of fiddling to get the bracket to line up and everything to line up uh, in its holes, which it does, that's the good thing. The bad thing is because I bought a brand new quarter panel, not a used one, it doesn't come with all of the uh, little nuts and bolts that the old one did. And what I mean by that is these rivet nuts that I wanna show you. As you can see on the old corner panel, there are these like riv nuts or rivet nuts, you can see it here, that are kind of like screwed down into the panel. And I really have no way of figuring out how to take these off. 
And the problem is they don't have these on the, the new panel, which is a pain in the butt. So now I have to order them from Volkswagen or figure out how to get these off. But otherwise, you know, looking at things on the bright side, the panel does line up perfectly. It looks good on the car. Now, I think just uh, so we don't stop the project here, I'm gonna try to fix the, uh, the new headlight or set up the, uh, the new headlight that I got. All right, so since I don't have the rev nut and it's on order and it'll be here in a few days from Volkswagen, I figured now would be the best time to move forward and try to figure out if I can fix the headlight. Now, this is the remainder of the headlight. Now, this is good news. I know this doesn't look like good news that I can use this for the headlight, but it is because for whatever reason, Volkswagen likes to make very specific headlights. Uh, it's not just a bulb. There's literally computers that go on the headlight. And for whatever reason, there's four of these computers that go on the headlight. Now, if I didn't have these, there'd be a good chance I wouldn't be able to use any headlight at all. So let's see if using these computers will solve that problem. Now I was able to get a secondhand headlight off of eBay for about 400 and something dollars, but I'll give you the exact breakdown a little later in today's video. All right, so here is the left headlight. Looks good, it goes this way here. And as you guys can see, it did not come with the four computers. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna install those right now, then we'll plug it into the car. And fingers crossed when I turn the car on, everything should work. I'm so happy I was able to find the rest of the broken headlight in the trunk of the car, because without them, fixing this headlight would be that much harder. Fortunately, because we do have them, the process of getting this headlight working should actually be pretty easy. At least that's what I thought until this happened. God. What you're seeing is literal rainwater pouring out of one of the headlight modules. This is really not how I wanted this day to go. I decided since it was just rainwater though and not salt water from any sort of flood, maybe there was still a chance of getting this headlight to work. And by some stroke of luck, when I took it apart, I didn't see anything corroded, which is a really good sign. With that in mind, I decided to put the rest of the headlight back together, transfer the two bulbs that I found into the new headlight light, plug it into the car and see what would happen. All right, so I managed to put all the computers back on the headlight. Good news yet again, and bad news. The good news is they all seem to have fit perfectly on here. Bad news, two different things. Number one, one of them had a ton of water in it from, I guess, sitting in the back of the trunk, which is definitely not a good thing, but I was able to unscrew it, look at the inside of it, and it appears that there doesn't look like any corrosion, so fingers crossed it works. Now, the other thing that is a problem is because I bought this headlight practically new from eBay, I didn't have any bulbs, which is good and bad. I was able to find the old bulbs from the broken headlight. Problem is both of those bulbs are broken, so the light likelihood that somehow both of these big headlight bulbs start to display is slim to none. There's just no chance with those broken bulbs, so I'll have to order those. But the turn signal and some of the other things should at least work, and fingers crossed it does, that all those computers work as well. So I'm gonna plug this in, I'm gonna turn the car on, and I'm gonna put the directionals on or something, the blinker, and fingers crossed we have power that everything was able to work with those computers. All right, so I'm gonna go turn on the car and see what exactly happens. Damn, so nothing right now, but I think I see potentially power, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So we got power going to the headlight. This is awesome. So I have a feeling that when I change out both of those bulbs, everything should work perfectly. So this is definitely an exciting good sign. That means that hopefully all four of those computers, even though the tabs are broken, should be working good. Now, one thing I am noticing is the DRL seem to stay on on that one and they don't seem to stay on on this one, but I'm gonna go turn on the auto lights and see if that does anything.
Oh, uh, well, I'm seeing light, so that's pretty incredible. I see both this and this is lit up and it's very bright. So I think they're actually working. Maybe they just need to be coded somehow. Well, after doing a bit more research online, I realized that DRLs or daytime running lights come installed in the headlights and that the bulbs have no effect on them working or not. I learned what actually sends power to the DRL is one of the control modules. Comparing part numbers to the one online, I found the module that I thought controlled the DRL and decided to take it apart, clean off anything I saw corroded, and to my surprise, there was actually very little, which easily wiped off with some rubbing alcohol. With everything cleaned up, I put it back together and gave it another test on the car. I have a feeling that that daytime running light module is probably broken from the corrosion. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try to take the module out of that one and put it in this one. And if this light turns on with the daytime running light, then it should be the module that needs replacing and it might not actually be coding. So it was on to taking off the other headlight, which I know works perfectly. I read somewhere in a forum that these control modules are actually universal and aren't coded to any specific headlight, which is definitely good news to me. That means it should be plug and play. At least that's what I'm hoping for, fingers crossed. Removing the headlight involves just taking off a few torque screws, and I also needed an extension to reach a couple of them. Then it was just as simple as un plugging it from the back and I was good to go. Next, I needed to swap over the DRL control module from the working headlight to the broken one and then go test it on the car again. All right, so moment of truth. Fingers crossed that this works and it's not coding and I just need to buy a $50 module and everything will be good with the headlights. Pray for me right now. Let's see. Just gotta plug it in and turn the car on. It's like the lights turn on, but the DRL doesn't. So there's a good chance this is probably has something to do with coating the headlight instead of it being the headlight itself. But I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you have any idea as to what this could be. Does it actually need to be coated? Even though I'm using all the original modules and I just swapped the module over and the DRL still doesn't turn on. All right, so swapping out the module didn't work, but I just discovered something, noticed something that, you know, fingers crossed, this might actually solve the problem. Now, um, I was wondering, like, why wouldn't the module actually work? Uh, we took it apart, it looks okay, but then I realized, hey, maybe it's the one that had all the water in it that's actually the problem. Even though it looks not corroded or anything inside, that could be the issue. The other thing I did is I took both of the old modules out and I'm looking at the part numbers, and they are practically identical. This one says, it probably won't even load. This one says 4G09076972G. And this says 4G09076972H. So we're talking about a G and an H. So I don't know what the difference is. They look practically identical. I'm gonna swap both off, put the new ones from the new light that I know works onto the old headlight or the new headlight that I, I bought and uh, we'll see if that solves the problem and then I'll know which part to order. So I'm gonna swap everything over now. We'll see if that works. I have a feeling it might, I really do. Right, so we tested this top module before and nothing changed, which is telling me that maybe the one that I had that I thought was broken isn't. 
Now we're gonna test this one. Even though I put swapped both over, this is truly the one that we're gonna test and see if it works. All right, so here goes the last and final attempt on seeing if it's the modules. Even though there's one more, I don't think, or two more, I don't think those are the reason. And if this doesn't work, then maybe I'll just swap those over for good luck. But this hopefully, when I search ERL module for Volkswagen Golf R on eBay, these are the two that come up, not these two. But uh, we'll see what happens. Just plug this in. This is the moment of truth that we've all been waiting for. And we got power, baby! We figured it out. It works. Oh my god. So now we know exactly what part number to order. I can't believe it worked. I cannot believe it freaking worked. So it's a new day and I was able to pick up the rivet nuts from Volkswagen. They were actually able to get it within one day from me calling. But before we go ahead and install these onto the quarter panel and then officially install the quarter panel onto the car, I just wanna go over the build cost of this project with you guys so far. The winning bid was $11,300. And what some of you guys are curious is the sales tax with the Copart fees came out to $2,372.73. I did get the car shipped from Georgia to Florida because it would have cost me practically the same uh, and I would have lost 20 hours from driving uh, and that was 550 bucks. So this currently gives us a grand total of $15,927.61, which isn't bad so far. Now what you guys need to consider is this car only has 34,000 miles on it, which really isn't that bad. Um, and one similar that wasn't in an accident with 34K, a 2017 Volkswagen Golf R, goes for about 33, maybe $34,000. Now, rebuilt cars usually go for about 20% less. So that would give this car, once it's fully rebuilt, about a value of 24 to $26,000 all set and done, which isn't bad. Now we are only at $15,927, which if we round up is $16,000, and we have about a $10,000 more budget to work with uh, for us to break even on the car. Now, obviously we wanna spend lower than that, but if I break even on my first car, that's totally fine with me. With that being said though, let's start putting this fender back into place. All right, so the time has come where I have to install two of these kind of rivet nuts onto the quarter panel in order to install it on the car. Now, I don't have a rivet nut gun to install this, so I'm gonna try the next best thing and kind of take the same concept and use a wrench and a ratchet with a long screw and a lock nut, and hopefully I can put enough power down to crush this into place without breaking anything and hopefully actually working. For those still confused, a rivet nut or riv nut is a one piece internally threaded tubular rivet that can be anchored entirely from one side. Its main use is to attach things together without the need to weld. It's also useful because it can be used on different materials like metal, plastic, and even wood where welding can't. Now, because I don't have a rivet gun, I wanted to try to replicate the same purpose as a gun by just using some everyday objects. This involves inserting the rivet nut into place, then putting a wrench on the lock nut before threading the bolt into the rivet, screwing the bolt into place, and holding the end of the screw with a socket. Keeping the screw in place with my socket, I was able to then start torquing down the lock nut, and in theory, it should be applying enough force up that it pulls and crushes the lock nut beneath it. And just like that, it worked surprisingly. Now it's time to finally install the fender properly onto the car. This process involved lining everything back up again before tightening down the bolts. With all the bolts officially installed on the fender, I could reinstall the plastic guard back behind the door, which took another hour to do, put the mud guards back onto the car, and then finally tighten the lug nuts down to the rim. So check it out, the fender is installed Installed properly, I aligned it, all looks good in my book. You can see the gaps all look good. Everything is aligned well, and it's on there nice. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it, because I am exhausted. But everything is exactly aligned how it's supposed to be. It all looks good to me. 
It was a fairly easy job, nothing too difficult. And you can see now the door opens and it doesn't make that sound, which is so nice. We can officially open the door. So guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. We got a lot of work done so far to the car, but there is so much more to get into. I appreciate all you guys for sticking along to the end of today's episode. Definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, smash the like button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Oh, <laughs> oh,